All right, for people who are joining this live stream, it's a bit early in the morning and I'm not in my happiest state here. We are looking at uh, various features of Wolfram language which have been tagged as experimental, which we are considering making unexperimental in future versions. First area is, oh boy, the cloud. We got a lot of things here which we're not proposing to make unexperimental. Cloud rendering method. That is the question of how is it, Jan, I assume, is here, right? Yeah, I'm here. That is the question of how a particular cell is, what, what method it's rendered by, and isn't that changing completely because we've got a bunch of more native rendering in the, in the, on, in web browsers now? Um, it's not, it's not changing completely. I mean, the two ways we have is basically as interactive boxes, which means to use the interactive JavaScript based rendering versus a bitmap that's produced on the server. And where, uh, of course, the, the client side rendering gets more powerful as, as we improve it. So the, the heuristic to decide which method to use will certainly change over time. But, uh, you know, fundamentally it, that that's the option that, that we have. Okay. There's, yeah. Um, All right, well, let's, let, I mean, fine. We can, I guess we can leave that as experimental. I don't think it really matters that much because it's not something we build a lot of other stuff on. I mean, what, when do you set cloud rendering method? Um, we, Is it I a mean, cell either, option? It's a cell option, yeah. I think you could also set it on the notebook level, but fundamentally it's a cell option. And um, you set it either in the graphical user interface, uh, you know, when you interact with the cloud notebook, when you just evaluated something and you got back a bitmap, for instance, then you can choose to render it as interactively instead. Um, really? If, I, you know, how do you do that? Want to live on the edge? Uh, it comes up as a, as a little info icon on the right. Um, Oh, that it had to so bitmap when, itself. Exactly, yeah, and then... I see, okay, fine. And so then this is the underlying option that gets set. Exactly, okay. I, I so that's one way, that. yeah. You know what, we should Or, of course, if you know, if, if okay. you deploy something and you know that it's going to produce this warning, then you might set it in advance. But it's, it's really something rather low level. I don't understand. What, well, okay, okay, next, I'm looking at the next items. Generate secure authentication key and friends. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> what aspect of this is still experimental? I mean, we don't have OAuth 2. Do we have Eric here? Do, what, what's the status of these things for OAuth 2? Somebody speak to that, please. We don't have Eric here. Okay. Well, somebody who Juan can actually here or... speak. Hi. Okay. So. Why are we proposing to leave these as experimental? What's experimental about them? How do they relate to OAuth 2? Somebody answer this, please. I see Dorian unmuted himself. Yes, that's really not related, sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, do we have Raj, the right people who do here, you have please? For this Jan was there, but I... I see he isn't okay. Get in the right the people, meeting. please. We'll loop back to this in five minutes, okay? okay? I want Eric Shu, and I want whoever else is relevant to this. This I, I think it's mostly Eric, right? Um, sure, I'll, I'll get Eric, too. Thank you. All right, next item, gallery view. Okay, we have uh, Ricard Ricardo. I think gallery view. Okay, is now yours, so right? when we use gallery view, I mean, this is something that we also want people in the function repository. There's a thing for making shingle pages, right? Shingle summary pages. There's also the question of how index.html gets made in a directory of cloud notebooks. Is that right, Ricardo? Can you speak to this, please? I don't know about directory. Maybe Jan can comment for that. Uh, how to how to make index for uh, for notebooks? Here the problem of gallery view. Why it's experimental? Because there is a second argument that we never designed. 
um, and it's the pagination argument. So right now it's like it was a function that takes uh, because because what you want to do is that right now if you provide like a thousand elements, uh, it's deployed in a single object. No, and, and so even if you need to read only one page. Wait, 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 um, wait. It paginates, right? It has option pagination. Correct, but still, uh, if you have a thousand elements, you still deploy a thousand elements. That I'm is sorry, I don't understand what you're talking about. It's it's deploying as many pages, right? Given the, uh, given a pagination option. No, yes? this is a dynamic. Uh, this is a dynamic construct, and so uh, at least for the implementation that we have now, uh, you just deploy a thousand elements, and then you, you 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 fetch the right page. And the idea was to have something like a function on the first argument that takes the you know the, the page number or something and we and you can generate I remember um, this that, that you yeah, can dynamically and, and, generate the right thing yeah, that it will then, that it at runtime it will run but whereas yes. this is being done at publishing time right this whole correct. thing is being created at publishing time correct yeah and so there is a part of the design that, that was never finished yet. Right, but how would we cache it if the thing, I mean, we're leading people into something where we can't really deliver properly because we won't get something that has a cached HTML page if the thing is dynamically generated at all levels, right? This is our Well, not really because we, 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 we already have um, um, an option to HTTP response to, to um, to allow that, so that there is a mechanism for caching that. Well, so basically, well, well, the first well, well, time you, you visit the page with with the correct uh, query string, uh, we should be able to to get to get. Okay, but listen, listen, listen. This is not okay. The whole span of this design is not done, right? Because remember, and for some reason, this dropped off the cloud meeting agenda. Matt, maybe you can speak to this. The question of what index.html does. Am I making sense for a, for a directory of cloud notebooks? Yeah. That is whether you expose a shingle page, an index page, or whether you don't, whether you have to know the specific page in order to go there. I'm making sense. Yeah. And this, now I think we've had some other, I mean, basically we would like to be able to use gallery view for the front of a resource of a repository, just directly. Am I making sense? Right? Do, do I need to? Okay. Do, yeah, you know what? So, I'm so you would about. have a bunch of cloud right, object so, references in here. So, so for example, if I go to J random, uh, you know, repository, here's one that doesn't exist yet, right? I go to this repository, right? I mean, this is this is a page, right? And we should be able to automatically generate a page like this from, uh, you know, directories or something else. Right, so right now we have a mechanism for generating these pages. See what I'm saying? But, right, or, or alternatively, another example would be. <coughs> Is you know, there a, a, a convenient idiom for deploying a gallery view as the index page for a directory? No, there isn't. That's the point. What on earth is this? I mean, the, the one thing you can do right now up? is. Yeah, go ahead. I, the the one thing you can do is you can deploy an index.nb. Sure. Yeah, but is that going to be the default thing reached if you go to that um, that directory? Yes. Okay, does anybody it know? It looks for index.nb um, or index.html, or otherwise you get a generic page. Okay. Okay, do, how would you put those in there? I mean, do you just do them by hand or what? I mean, we, that's we need the only to... option you have right now. You you have to deploy that notebook manually. Um, but right. So what we, we should have, do uh... is in the file browser, presumably, we should give the option to to set what the index page for a directory is, and it should display that somehow as some badge on the directory. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Yeah, I'm not totally sure about the badge, but but certainly about the. The UI option, and I think we have a, a language design proposal, uh, right, Joel, for the uh, I don't know what is it, cloud object index page or something. Yeah, something like that. 
Uh, could you speak so I can hear you, Joel? Uh, how's that? That's now perfect. Yes. What were you saying? I was just agreeing, Jan, uh, with Jan. There's, could you explain there's... the design more precisely? The thing that we're thinking about is just instead of having a, a couple of specific file names, just that you can set an option on a directory marking a particular cloud object as the index for the directory. Right. Um, and I'm sure we could get more exotic from that if there's a use case, but it's pretty straightforward extension of what we have. Okay. Okay. All right. Fine. But so with gallery view, it sounds to me like, no, it's not finished. I don't completely agree with Ricardo's function. I mean, I, I have a feeling it should be another function because I think it's got other tentacles when the thing is dynamically picking stuff up. Am I making sense? I mean, and, and which you know, is why we didn't finish. Yeah. Uh, right. I mean, maybe it should be called gallery function view or something or function gallery view or something like that. Um, uh, or dynamic gallery view might be, might be a better term because it's going to dynamically generate stuff. O although, hmm, I mean, I could imagine that we would want something where the gallery here, hmm, I mean, we really need to, so, so Bradley, the, the, you know, this really should be merged with the way that we're building, you know, repository shingle pages, don't you think? Mm, I'm not sure what you mean. Well, I mean that we should use this function instead of having hand created, um, you know, uh, index pages. There should be a way of using gallery view. It's something one often wants to do. Given a collection of, you know, directories, you know, there's th this idea of having some kind of index of these things, a gallery of these things, is a pretty common thing. We should support uh, a function that just does it. Uh, I've kicked around the concept of having kind of a, a language representation for a deployable site like a repository where one of the pages you know, kind of like the shingles where you would give it a template instead of a file and there would be a, a data aspect. So it would generate new pages as new data comes in if necessary. Kind of the like a repository without the Wolfram language backend, just a web element. Um, mm -hmm. I think it would be, there would be more than just a gallery view. I, well, you know, sure I think I, I think I, you're going to want to upload okay, a template. Fine. Let, let's, I think let's, that gets into let's okay. That gets into the web page construction stuff, which we're supposed I think to finish. So. All right. Well, okay. So then, what this needs to do is spin off a separate meeting specifically about web page construction and gallery view construction. Okay. Can somebody make that happen, please? Um, I'm taking note right now. So Thank you. And Eric and Manu are here. Okay, let's go back to secured authentication key. Okay, so can somebody explain the relationship? So there is a claim from Juan that these should be made left experimental. I do not understand the claim. The logic does not make sense. They, but what I want to know is, as we build the OAuth2 authentication mechanism, does generate secured authentication key still make sense and work? Yeah, it should, and I think that's what why it should be experimental is there's going to have to be changes as OAuth 2 stuff comes in. And what changes to make do sure. they need to be? Uh, it'll have different field names, for example. So and what? if we go down the route of adding things like um, privileges for different, we've touched on that idea, but I haven't fully developed it. Uh, that would have to be included as well. Well, I don't understand. Do we think that there's something wrong with what's already here? Let me pull up the doc page. I mean, uh, I'm surprised well, that I don't think what's here would would necessarily become wrong, but we'd probably have to add a good bit and maybe. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I'm worried that as we add those elements, we might want to make some minor changes to what's here. 
All right. Um, what is our time scale for getting the full version of this with OAuth 2 finished? Um, don't current, well, OAuth 2 for, for what? For oh, wait a minute. OAuth, OAuth 2 is supposed for... to be done by this week. So Eric, can you speak to that, please? Well, it's supposed to be done on dev this week. Okay. Not on production. It? So it's, I'm still reviewing the code. I mean, it's, it's a massive application, so it's, it's not, I've been trying to get to it, but I'm also dealing with getting the Wolfram Alpha notebook and pro bundles together right now. So it's doing, splitting my time between the two, but I'm hoping to get things on dev this week. Okay. Okay. But so given but then the, I, uh, with that, I would have to work with Bradley's team and, and Juan to okay, see but, but, what but, we need to do. Yeah. Right, right. But given aspect. that you're trying to get these things deployed, how can they be deployed without some language hook? I mean, it's using the standard OAuth 2 protocol, right? So we can, I mean, generate secured authentication key was specifically talking to the OAuth 2, well, not OAuth 2, our servers. So, I mean, we just need to give, I just need to give one the endpoints and everything like that, and then they can hook it up. But so would generate secured authentication be then generate an OAuth 2 key or um, an OAuth 1 key? We need to finish getting the OAuth 2 secured authentication key support in place before it could do that. But I mean, we wouldn't want to switch over from one to the other, would we? I mean, aren't there plenty of services that still want OAuth 1? Oh, it'll have to support both. Yeah, we need to add the, the OAuth 2 support to what is already there. OK. All right. So fine. I mean, so there's two two phases. So we can do the, we can generate the OAuth 2 keys, but then all of our applications like cloud and alpha would have to also implement yeah, OAuth. Yeah, but we don't need to do that immediately. They're perfectly happy with OAuth 1 right now, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, the issue for OAuth 2 is the many external applications, like all the single sign-on stuff and so on, which requires OAuth 2, correct? Right, but that doesn't involve specifically generate secured authentication key, but it does require secured authentication key itself um, to support okay. all. Because okay. generate secured authentication key is specifically for our servers, I believe. Fair enough. So, Fair yeah. enough. So this is where we have the OAuth type. Uh, yeah, version is, is in there. <laughs> Just one is supported. Um, okay, so then, the, then this would be OAuth version 2. And then it has all of the complexity here. Yeah. Okay, fine. So hopefully we'll, we will see that pretty soon. I mean, that should not be a difficult thing, if I'm understanding correctly, for you to add to secured authentication key is what it needs for OAuth 2. Um, yeah, it's not extremely complicated. Uh, there's a lot of design complications because the difference, you know, secured authentication key you know, if, if we implement our server to spec, then it would be easy to make something that works to spec, but a lot of services don't implement 100% to spec. So we're adding little ways to expand. Um, okay, to, well, I mean, to, the, the, one of the early that. targets is single sign-on, right? Um, that would be on the, on the server side, not the in-language side. Is Those can really? happen separate. Okay. Those can happen separately, yeah. What, what about if somebody has a cloud object that they want to secure with a single sign-on? In other words, somebody at some organization talk, talk with has Eric a single sign-on mechanism and people you know, use that single sign-on and somebody wants them to be able to access a cloud object if they're signed in with the single sign-on mechanism. That's yeah, probably I mean, something that won't happen right away. No, but you I'm know, trying to understand they're not both fit together. So, so basically, the organization. So when we hook up single sign-on, we register an organization with our system. So we could pass that organization identifier to the cloud in order to put into the permission structure, but we would need to expose that. Okay, so let me understand that. So that means in the cloud there will be a thing that says secure the the the. the the permissions, who can get something, the, you know, permissions are who and what. So the who would be secure authentication key, blah, 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 for the single sign-on of organization X gets to read this cloud notebook. Is that correct? I think something like that, yeah. That would be a good mechanism, don't you think? Is, is there still a corresponding cloud user? I mean, there must be, right? 
There is uh yes, there is a Wolfram ID associated with it, but it would for single sign on a lot of times it is going to be some dummy user that um, well, or more yeah. to the point, less less hackerly, it's a generic ID for that organization. Right? That's what we need to have. Uh, no, I don't think so because then that means everybody who is using that single sign on would share the files, which we don't want, right? Yeah, so well, every person yeah. would so And how what is the structure it goes, then? It goes uh, a, a step further than that once we start talking about secure authentication and keys because then it's not just who and what because the OAuth credentials uh, typically represent like an application through which you are accessing. So it's it's who and how accesses what. So there's like another another dimension. So that's a, that's another piece of the who. So because the, the key itself should not like have the permissions of the owner. It doesn't identify the owner. It kind of has its own set of access. So that'll be that'll be something I think Eric and I will probably need to sit down um, probably with some cloud folks to to make sure that makes sense, um, especially when it comes to the sign, single sign-on aspect. Okay. All right. I think that's it for that section. Clearly. Okay. So I'm going to expect that within a few weeks we will be talking about more design around OAuth two and so on. Is that a fair? expectation yeah i think we can do that um okay. we can let's, have let's that record that let's make sure soon. it's in the cloud dev meeting and that's um so that we track what's going on unless you think there's a different meeting okay. that's suitable for it uh i think that's that's good for some aspect of it but there's a, another aspect that maybe we can just have a separate design review with you for the oauth2 aspects okay um, i mean what happened to we you know the, the series of authentication meetings was basically closed down i suspect those need to be opened up again particularly as we're starting to look at things like this lattice you know permissions lattice and all this kind of stuff uh probably individual meetings for those aspects okay. rather than right. a right. consolidated meeting because that, that ended up pulling in a bunch of people that weren't relevant uh each okay week. Um, okay fine. But certainly we can we can make sure that these topics keep coming up all right cloud dev meeting please make sure it's an item on there okay so it's tracked okay the cloud expression disaster by the way folks involving just the authentication stuff can leave yep. um, Thanks. Thanks. The, um I, there's nothing to say about this. I mean, Dorian is trying to fix this, right, Dorian? Yes, exactly. I'm currently working on a prototype, iterating with the, the cloud team as well as the Warren's team. And we are working on making a new implementation that would suit our, our needs. And so what is the basis of that implementation? Uh, currently, it's, it's based on the Postgres. Uh, which okay. is a uh, very flexible uh, database and also... Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> okay, and so that's okay, working so progress. Question. Um, mm -hmm. For the... This does or does not use the read-write database capabilities. Is it using the new uh, read-write? No, because everything is currently... So everything is done without a kernel. So it's pure Java. Uh, implementation and uh, and SQL and uh, and also it makes use of uh, WXF and um, I see. Okay, and, so it's optimized for storing expressions, and that's fine. Um, yes, I mean obviously you need to make sure that whatever you're doing will work with private clouds and so on, right? So we don't have some weird Postgres management system somewhere in the middle of this, right? Well, you you will need uh, yes, but I, I think the the, the the team. So that's something that we will yes pay attention to. But um, yes, we will. Okay. Okay. What's the time scale for seeing something here? Um, so for the moment, re, um, pr um, pr proof of concept implementation. Uh, I, I I it it depends. It's not my main project, but uh, I'm still able to work on it significantly and so i'm expecting to get something within uh, probably weeks maybe f i don't know if you need to get involved uh because not until the, it something works ex exactly but also the the design of the of the symbols are 
it's going to to be probably maintained for 95% of it um, um, because we have a good design and and so as much as we can we we need to, excellent. to keep it and so well the, the idea is that we drop only the, the things that makes everything uh much much more complex or which won't scale at all fine and in the end there's not much to remove so let me make one comment about this there clearly has to be a management interface for users so they don't wind up discovering they have 100 gigabytes of crud and cloud expressions and they didn't know it right so in a previous model here cloud expressions were cloud objects and so you could look at the you know you could basically just go to your file browser and see what was there what is the plan now <clears throat> so cloud objects also have a size, so that's one way to monitor them. Um, no, no, I understand that. But is this proxied through cloud objects, or is this something thing that is raw cloud expression? Does cloud expression have an associated cloud object? Yes. So cloud expression okay, is fine. there is a hook, uh, so there is a cloud object that exists, and and that's okay. That's so fine. So the cloud pointer. object will pretend that it is. Uh, you know, will yeah. envelop the Postgres and will pretend it has the size of the Postgres database. Is that correct? That's the idea. That's how it works okay. currently, and that's something we we keep. Okay, that sounds sensible to me. Okay, great. And then presumably, delete cloud expression is unnecessary because it's just delete object for the cloud object. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, but I mean, since we have create, uh, well, I mean, yeah. Uh, we we can use delete file or delete uh, delete object. object. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I mean, I I don't I don't know if if you don't think it's necessary, then we can remove it. But I think it will. Be I think we're trying to get away from the specific type deletes, I unless see. there's a compelling reason. Just as we probably should have a create object that takes different types of objects to create. That probably should be looked at in connection with the the um, uh, the data structure mechanism, Tom's new data structure mechanism. Maybe we should look at that in an LCC meeting. The possibility of a pure create object. Boy, we'll look like an object-oriented language one day. Okay. Um, the. Okay. All right. That's it for cloud cloud expression. I think. Let's go on to source link. Um. Okay, now my main concern about SourceLink is that it hasn't been as much used as one might like. Um, in fact, I'm just writing a thing about notebook publishing where I'm gonna talk about SourceLink. But when, okay, so let me walk through when SourceLink is, is being used by default. Um, I mean, I, I'm not completely convinced by this, and I, I'm not inclined to de-experimentalize it until we understand it a little better. Because, I mean, when you deploy, when you cloud publish something, okay, okay, if I take, a, a, like, a GIF or something, and I, um, uh, and I publish it on the web as something which can be embedded elsewhere, do I get prompted to generate a source link there, or how does that work? Uh, we no, I think the, the only way it's that automatically is if you publish from the cloud in the first place. Right? If, if you start from desktop, then there is no source to point to. Okay. And, uh, Although it might want to prompt even, you to say, you might want to deploy this to provide a source. Potentially, I, I would think it's a bit aggressive, but that that's what would need to happen. Yeah, right. Um, and even then, in the cloud, it's not happening for all deployments. I assume for for well, when for is it image, happening? I, I, no, I think it still or, happens. Or maybe we said it, but it's not like we show it any place. Right. Okay. So you know what, guys? I don't think this is ready for prime time, but I think we should investigate what's actually happening here. So if I do this. And then I, what on earth? Okay, and then I go here and I say, publish, share, sell. By the way, why doesn't that say dot, dot, dot? That should say dot, 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 right in the menu. Yeah, yeah. the whole dialogue is. Okay, now what is this? Very old. Here? 
Yeah, so why hasn't this been fixed? There's a project for UX to fix it. No, no, it's, but, no, it's but not UX. UX. No, no it's not. UX will it's never not, get UX. It. No, it's, it's just that we've been working on some of the other projects I and mean, we've had it there on our list. Okay, do you have a design for it? Yeah, we're going to use basically the exact same thing as the other published dialogue, just change some wording. Okay, how about we actually get this done? How about this shows up on the cloud dev meeting and you explain to me when it's done? Okay. okay yeah, and, and it's been there. It's been there. On the active list or on some crazy backlog? Uh, near the top of one of the backlogs. Actually, I have noticed it there. Okay, mm -hmm. you, you know what? How about we actually get it done? It doesn't look very hard to me. Looks like we're installing a dialogue we already have. Yeah, yeah, it's it's near the yeah. We 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 revisited this 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 week and okay. Well, anyway, so but, but what is the time. mechanism for source link in that dialogue? Do you understand my question? Uh, I'd have to check that dialogue because it is outdated. So but, we don't actually know. Well, the mechanism in the language and in the publish menu and in the dialogue that will be appearing once we fix it it does set the source link uh to this notebook okay even if the notebook is not is uh is not public correct oh um, does it give and, a warning that says it isn't public uh it, no there's no warning much, but... here but then in the actual deployed view we have sets of rules that we spent a bunch of time on to determine whether or not we show uh the actual link so if so, the source link will be set, you know, in the code, but we might not display anything in the deployed view if you don't have access to the actual source notebook. Right. Okay. You know what? We're going to need to go through this again because, you know, as we look at these embeddings, like, okay, how does it flow through your JavaScript embedding, Jan? The source link stuff. Um, I'd have to look. I have to check whether it actually happens. But I guess we could show it in the in the footer that we have. We should yeah. Footer. I mean, if we have a source link, we probably should show it. And similarly, these other embeddings, you know, the ones that are coming up soon, right? So, so the embedded view does have a footer, though. Sometimes, yeah. It does. Unless you disable it, if, okay. Which you can do if you're a you know, high paying user. Right, right, right. Right. But I mean, we need a design. Yeah. Okay. So, so listen, this needs to be done properly, right? It needs a design for. Yeah. Well, uh, for, for iframe embedding, it, it shows up this the same way it does in regular deployed view. I and understand. But for JavaScript sure it carries embedding. through correctly for the JavaScript embedder. And the O embed embedding and all yeah. those kinds of things. Right. And, and also, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I really want to start seeing people using it. Have we have we seen a lot of people using this or not? Well, it is set for a lot of notebooks. Okay, like billions of them. Because it's yeah, it's, because it's set. Because there's a default behavior, I, I right. think. Um, yeah, yeah. <coughs> I don't think we have stats on like who follows the sources. If okay, well, that's we, should what probably, we should probably know how how often that's done. You know what? I think this needs a separate review, right? We should review the design. I mean, graphic design and functional design of this thing in all these different cases. By the way, I mean, Carl on our live stream is asking about bibliography management. Um, we have had a project to do a bunch of stuff with that, and I have not heard about it in several months. And I wonder what's happening with it. And maybe somebody could, could track that down. That's an Alan Michael project. Sure. I doubt anybody in this meeting knows the status of it. Um, the uh, that, that is interesting. I was going to mention on this, the only thing about the language that um, I have a question about that just came up in the past couple days is, can you set a source link to an object that you are not the owner of? Essentially citing like, oh, my inspiration is from... Yeah, I understand. That's nice. Yeah. <coughs> but then, yeah, it then if you're using it like that, then it's more a bibliography link than a source. Yeah, right. And Carl also points out things about attribution and licensing for data and all those kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, I think right now a source link is very much not, I mean, what we could imagine is that source link is an association that contains a whole bunch of stuff, right? 
And that's probably where we should go, and it should probably merge with the bibliographic citation stuff that we're looking at. Does that make sense? Um, I mean, uh, arguably, okay, so listen, let us get a custom meeting about this. The issue is standardized attribution, standardized licensing, linking to other people's uh, content, and the connection to the bibliographic citation stuff. Fair? Yes? Yep. Okay. Sounds good. And we're not going to de-experimentalize it right now. S Stephen, can you switch to session history? We already have the people there. And yep. Uh, iconize absolutely should be de-experimentalized. Right. I would say the one sort of counter argument to that is that we haven't um, documented what it evaluates to, which is a nice object. But Humph. What do you mean evaluates to? I mean, so so it is. Well, if you hit shift enter, it has to evaluate to something, and it, what it evaluates to is an iconized object. Okay, and then what does that do? Well, that's the thing that formats as the iconized form. And then if you copy paste it, it upon input will act like the underlying expression, correct? Correct. But if you reference percent, it'll be the head will be iconized object. I see. And has that bitten us? I don't think it has. I mean, I think people use this primarily as an input mechanism, not something else, right? I'm not sure I understand the question, but... Well, I'm asking, are people confused by this iconized object return value? Um... A little bit, but... Um, okay, I'm rolling my eyes here. Obviously, we have to think more about this before we just de-experimentalize it. Oh, sigh. Okay, I mean, we also are trying to understand the, the possibility of automatic code folding, automatic elision, which presumably Iconize has a part of. What else can we do? I mean, I, I don't understand. The fact that it returns something other than itself is for what reason? Well, how, how else do you expect it to format? I guess that's I guess that's right. Unless it validates itself and then formats. I guess that's right. Mm -hmm. But when you say people have sometimes been confused, can you can you characterize that? Um, well, there was a Stack Exchange thread of people who were confused. Yes. Okay. Can we understand the confusion? I mean, can we can we discuss the confusion? I mean, so if I say percent, percent, percent. Well, then it'll. Okay. Then like I get that. that. Now, what happens if I say if I take if I copy this? and I paste it, well, if I evaluate this, I'm going to get, oh, well, that's very fine. How did that work? Wait well, a minute. Oh. It, the, it, it has an interpretation, which is the, the input to iconize. OK, so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, wait, why, why am, bizarrely, there are no input and output lines in this notebook. How could that be? Why is that? Rather Sorry, I, I I switched it off. I mean, uh, I turned it off in the notebook preferences. So okay. just copied in a new notebook. Okay. By the way, random question: all the um, the publish, magnify, etc. options are those in one point fifty three or not? That's a cloud question. They are not. Oh, gosh. It's kind of annoying. Kind of messes up. 
something I wanted to explain in this notebook publishing post that I have been assigned to write. Okay, that's a shame. Oh, so definitely you wanna had get a it, percent 78. But we did mention it. Okay, so here, here we've got this. Okay, so now if I say percent squared, I'm going to get garbage. And what uh, mechanism do I have to get rid of that? I mean, copy it and use it as an input. Okay, so if I take this and I use it as an input, then I get that. Now, can I also use defer or whatever? Can, can I take that? Does that work and say, is that the right, right function? Um. <coughs> no, that's definitely not the right function. Um, but there should be some programmatic way to take something that has been iconized. So imagine you had a button, for example, and you were trying to do this. You need some way to get it to de-iconize as purely as a piece of code. Am I making sense? Um, say that again. Okay, you need a way, some function that you can apply to percent eighty here to de-iconize those things. What is that function? Um, okay, we don't know the answer, but we need to figure out the answer. Okay. okay. Okay, so Carl is asking on our live stream about having iconized object would also allow uh, out of course storage. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, I don't know what we've done on that yet. I mean, things like data set, we now have a mechanism, just like with audio and so on, that says store in the notebook or don't store in the notebook, right? For iconize, I don't believe we're doing that right now. Could we? Um, I, it's possible. Um, um, well, okay. You don't seem to be awake, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to continue this, given that. Okay. All right, but we need to separately pick that up, think about it, okay? Okay. I think we're out of time here for this meeting. Um, it's a pity that it got scheduled when it did, but um, we will continue it at a different time. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye.